Hello and welcome to The Hive. This is Season 11, Episode 3. Haven't said that one in a while. Today we have arranged for you a number of stories from my very own high school. Tell us, viewers, have you ever been driving and wanted to smoke a fat hog? Beware. Last month, the LHS photojournalism class produced a public service announcement cautioning the use of marijuana in driving. Up next on The Hive... That night, if I had known the risks, I would have called a cab. Marijuana is known to impair coordination and slow the ability to react and make decisions. Forty-nine percent of 14 to 18 year old drivers that use marijuana drive an automobile after using it. Crash deaths from 2000 to 2018 have increased from 9% to Let's take a tour of the LTCC. Up next, the LTCC Jamboree, produced by Kelsey Lawson. That's me! So, I'm in ag construction. The teacher of it is Mr. Inman, or we call him Tom. I like it because it's not just welding, but it's not just construction. It's a mixture of both. We do welding. We do. We incorporate wood. I'm an ag construction too, but that makes ag construction one and two together. Right now, I'm working on a 36 foot full hay trailer. But a little bit before that, me and one of my other buddies are working on a stock trailer. I have to make new doors for it and new tarp for it. Okay. I'm in Mr. Goodwin's welding class. I'm working on a, a piece of a certificate right now in welding with 7018 uh, horizontal. I'm in Mr. Smith's class and it is auto collision. We repair uh, hoods, learn how to fix dents, do bondo work, paint, and just make a hood going from all wrinkledy to straight as a whistle. I'm an auto tech too. Uh, Brian Moore teaches it. We work on cars like it's a live shop, and we, you know, learn all about the automotive industry. 
uh, change oil, brakes, stuff like that outside of the engine. Now, right now we have a Ford in there we're doing brakes on. And, uh, Mr. Talbot's class, uh, he's engineering and uh, all we do in there is uh, 3D print stuff and play with the VEX kits. Uh, like right now we are making elbow joints and uh, 3D printing like little plastic pieces to make. Um, I have Mr. Jackson in the LTC hallway. He is super fun. <laughs> um, he's very energetic. He might be the smallest one out of all the teachers, but he, you can hear him from a mile away, I promise you that. He got me into engineering, and there was a point where I didn't want to do engineering at, um, with all the troubles and being a girl in the society, but he really helped me see my real potential. I'm in advanced livestock, and my teacher is Craig Evans. We learn about animals and judging them and putting them in the right classes. Anywhere from uh, cows to um, swine, sheep, I'm in the culinary arts program. This is my first year. My teacher is Mrs. Brinkley. It's a really fun program and you get to meet new people and you're in there for four hours. But like, it's a, like a family. So you guys like bond and stuff and it's pretty cool. I'm in fashion interior design and Miss Brown teaches it. And we basically learn about how to make clothes, and we learn about different styles of houses. I'm in uh, biomedical science, and Coach Pierce teaches it, and I think other students should join it because I feel like it gets us prepared for the future. If you want to go into like, uh, like a nursing type of field or something like that. My teacher is Chef Brasser. I am in the AM class of construction, and what we do is we go out and build houses in the public. Uh, the project we're working on right now is we are building a house out behind the Dollar General and break time. The machining program consists of manual machines, which is just turning knobs and cutting metal with end mills, ball nose end mills, drill bits, and such. It's really precision. We cut to thousands of an inch precision, and we also learn G code. My class is child number three, and Miss Parton is the head teacher of it. Um, in that class, we talk about the different like ages of schools and um, how they educate the students. Um, I think if you're wanting to become a teacher, you should definitely like join uh, child development because. Child Level 3, you can visit schools and like understand the beginning or see what teachers do. All right, so I am in the business program that Miss Rebecca Hudson teaches in LTCC. Um, we go to district, state, and national levels competing in different business categories. Um, I joined the class because I want to go into business and maybe someday even be an entrepreneur. Um, I think it's really, really fun and it really gets us prepared for real life and college and uh, I think you should join it if you're into business or someday you want to start your own business. Up next on The Hive, we explore how the girls wrestling team made state and how they've set an example for the rest of us to follow. Produced by Castor Stero and myself. We teach resilience, the ability to overcome obstacles, the ability to take these kids and handle defeat and get better and figure out what we can get better with and what we can learn from those lessons and take it instead of just taking those lessons and handling that loss negatively, but being able to turn that into a positive. Coach always says, what you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. Just work your hardest, try your best. We've wrestled really well. We've put some kids in the varsity lineup and they've handled it really well. They've bounced back a few times. We've taken some losses and they've bounced back from it. And Our girls team's just tearing it up. They're going. They're just flying. They're just flying. It's been, a, it's been an awesome season. I first started wrestling when I was about four. I kept going with it until I was about 10 and then it got kind of awkward. Guys started to develop and they were getting stronger than me. So I decided, you know, I'll take a break, try something different. Freshman year when they decided to sanction girls wrestling, I decided it would be a good idea to try it out again and it's worked out so far. Um, I hope that they're able to learn from previous matches and previous mistakes and we hope that in practice we get that stuff and we prepare them and then they're able to move forward and move on from there. Uh, but most important, I guess, what we're really focusing on is just being in a good position and taking the next steps forward to get better every single time that we wrestle. Up next on The Hive, we take a look at a sport many have heard of but maybe didn't realize the LHS offers. Archery. 
produced by myself. My older brother joined archery his junior year, and I seen that he was having a lot of fun and he was doing really well, and uh, it helped, it interested me, so I decided to join my freshman year. I've been shooting a bow for a while since I was little, but never actually like practiced. I've just done it for fun. I like watching myself grow throughout each competition, and uh, like through my freshman and sophomore year, watching that growth through the summer, it helps everything. I feel like I did really good. I got first. That's the best I've ever done, my personal record, even through practices. It makes me really proud of myself because I don't know a lot of people in ours that have gotten that high before and no one's made it that close to state in a while. I really hope I do get to go to state. I know some of the things that I did this competition that I can fix on, like keeping my hand more steady and making sure I'm in my exact spot. So yeah, I'm hoping I get to state because that would be really good uh, for me and my team. Uh, yes, because it would help Mr. Shot the coach a lot because bows and equipment are not cheap and he helps us a lot through that. And it's also a lot of work for us because we have practices and everything like that. So yes, I do think it should be a sport. Archery is really fun and I'm really glad I'm seeing more people join. Up next on the Hive, local dancers show off their talents at the Cowan Civic Center, produced by Hayden Burns. That's me. Hello, I'm Diane cummins Leffler, the director for School of Performing Arts and the owner. And this is one of my lovely teachers, Miss Cat Poole. Our show was the Nutcracker Visits the Four Realms. We haven't done the Nutcracker in over four or five years, and what a great way to bring it back here to Lebanon, bring in the old and the new Nutcracker, and just create a wonderful Christmas, hopefully memories that will go forever, and hopefully a tradition. I loved it all. There wasn't anything I didn't like. My two and three-year-olds are just the cutest little thing. My older ones work so hard on point, I personally like when the babies get on stage <laughs> and they just kind of bounce around. You never know what they're going to do. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I could not have done any of this without the great support of all my parents out there, both parents and extended family. I know there's a lot of aunts and uncles and grandparents that bring their dancers to our studio because parents are busy working and everything. So we would not have been able to make any of this happen without the support of the family as well as the community. I've had some great folks. Uh, I want to, lots of people here in the community that have helped us out. We had Flirty Frog for advertisement, the newspaper uh, did some advertisement for us. Uh, Miss Cat here uh, with her photography took care of us and took pictures prior to the show. And also you all here at the high school taking photos and what have you. So just a kudos to everyone, the whole community. I just hope and pray that people take time and just find something great to do and make it a family tradition. Like, come see the School of Performing Arts perform, whether it's a Christmas recital or a spring recital. Up next, the LHS Theater Department had their show last weekend. Here's a trailer showing off their performance. When young orphan botanical genius Seymour Problem finds a strange and interesting plant. He is shocked when the only thing that will keep it alive is blood. While the plant brings Seymour fame and fortune, it comes with a nasty price. It is only after Seymour commits a villainous act that he realizes the strange poetry too has made plans for world domination. Don't feed the plants! Shows are at Cowan Civic Center on February 11th and 12th at 7 p.m. Tickets are $3 for students and $5 for adults. enough for those spaces. So as we stand building and reminding ourselves of the urgency of our beloved community, there are reminders here, there are lessons here, there is an important 
history here. I would implore us this morning. Use Black History Month as a springboard to learn more about people who look and think differently than you do. Where Martin Luther King Jr. really shines is Letter from a Birmingham Jail, where he talks about, in essence, rising up against the oppressors and that sometimes you have to show your power, I lack of a better word to describe it, whenever people aren't listening to you. Don't be afraid to get your voice heard, to stand up. This man was assassinated. Like his daughter is on Twitter all the time talking about stuff. People didn't like him. And it's important to remember why they didn't like him. They didn't like him because he was trying to change the system. He was trying to get people out of poverty. He was trying to make sure our government was just and equal for everyone. Every advancement we make, we also take steps back. It just happens. Like social media is a great and wonderful invention. Like right now, we're communicating with each other on a snow day. That's pretty cool that we have this technology to do so. With great power, it comes great responsibility. And so are we being responsible with social media? Are we being responsible with the message that we're sharing on the internet? Are we being responsible, making sure that we are good stewards of the internet and of technology. And are we doing good and raising people up? Black history is American history. When you're looking at our education system, at least my experience, I'm finding that my education has some areas that need to be filled in. One of the central tenets of uh, the Gospels and of the lessons of Jesus was that we need to forgive our enemies, love our enemies, and pray for those who persist execute us. And uh, Dr. King was applying that to his own life and to the movement that he led during the civil rights movement of the 50s and the 60s. There's a lot of work still to be done because as a society, we've not achieved uh, Dr. King's dream. We speak of not judging people by the color of their skin, but rather by the content of their character. When we look at um, access to resources, you know, what people are able to achieve, we've not achieved that equity and that indicates that, you know, there's a way to go. Highlight figures from Black history, you know, so that you're putting them forward as people that we need to know about. People like Ida Josephine Wells, she was a journalist like you, and she was, I think she worked during the time of Reconstruction. She later helped with the suffragette movement. You know, like Susan B. Anthony, the people who... Um, we're at the forefront of that movement who happened to look like me, but you don't necessarily hear about uh, people that look like Ida Wells. I think we need to remember that. When we look at like all aspects of our culture, they uh, have significant influences and contributions from Black Americans. I think that's something that we need to learn about and celebrate. Thanks for joining us on The Hive. We'd love to see you next time. in the table. <laughs> Get back down there. Ah!